My name is Sally. I think most of y'all here know me. I am uh, Councilman Nettles' district director, um, and I'm going to get us started tonight. Before we get into all the city business, I did want to give some of our local organizations a chance to come up and introduce themselves um, and advertise their organization. So Rodney, if you want to come up first. Good evening. How y'all doing? My name is Pastor Rodney McIntosh. I am the executive director of VIP Fort Worth, which stands for Violence Intervention and Prevention Fort Worth. We're an organization who focuses directly on cyclical and retaliatory and group violence. We do, as some people would say, the hard work. Man, it's literally our goal and our, uh, our desire to end gun violence in this city. And a lot of people have said it'll never end, but we're going to do the best that we can to make sure that happens. Our focus is right, now, right as of right now is the east side of Fort Worth, uh, south side of Fort Worth, which they call central in the city, and then uh, the west side of Fort Worth, we deal with young men from the ages of 12 to 29, but we also understand that there's no age limit on violence, so we're willing to work with any young man that we have to to see if we can end violence in our city. Thank y'all so much. Hello, everybody. My name is Sean Lasseter. I'm the executive director of Braver Together. Um, we are centralized in 76104, but primarily in the historic Southside communities, Morningside and Hillside. Um, we have been bringing community ambassadors together to address um, what was published um, in 2018 that 76104 had the lowest life expectancy. Um, but what we know is that not all of 76104 is a part of that number. It's mostly the black and brown communities that have suffered the most. And so that has become our focus. It's not a single focus on just health care. We believe that there are a lot of determinants that add to that, which is health care, also education, housing, and business and economic development. And so we have a festival coming up November 12th in Evans Plaza, right in front of the Chambly Library. Um, I have flyers where you can go and do a little QR code and go to our website. But our website is bravertogether.org and it will pop right up and you can get more information. But we have basically turned the plaza into a little, I would say an oasis, in a way to say that we are gonna bring the water and the life to the community. Um, it's already there, but we are going to concentrate it for a day. And so community members can come and get all healthcare services for free, um, pick up a lot of the things that they may need to just household items, um, things for their uh, babies and children and to have a little fun. So it's gonna be healthcare justice and community joy. And that is our slogan, justice and joy. Um, we have to be able to do both. And we have to change the narrative and, and put some positive joy into our work. It's hard work, but we also have to live and be in a community together. And so that's our goal. So our flyer is over here, but bravertogether.org. You can get so much information of how you can join us. Good evening. My name is Gabrielle Watson, and I work with Advocates for Community Transformation. Our focus is neighborhood safety. Um, we started out in Dallas. We've been there for a little over 13 years. Um, we've just kind of trickled into Fort Worth, so we're getting to know everything here. But um, we provide free legal services to um, homeowners who are um, needing representation against um, nuisance property owners. So if you'll come see me, I'm right over here and I can give you guys a little bit more information. Thank you. Hi everyone. I hope everyone's having a good evening. My name is Patrice Jones and I am the founder of Southside Community Garden and we build gardens for families in 76104. As Sean stated, this is zip code with the lowest life expectancy. UT Southwestern did a study in 2018 uh, deeming that zip code of having the lowest life expectancy at 66.7 years. Fast forward four years later, it's now 62.8 years. So people in that zip code are dying 15 years younger than the rest of the state of Texas. My organization, we build gardens at people's homes, help them maintain the garden. We said it was going to be for a year, but we're having a hard time letting go. So we're helping everyone maintain their garden and they keep all the produce that they grow and they have an opportunity to sell that produce at a farmer's market called Plunky Town Mindful Market that takes place once per month over at Texas Wesleyan University. And uh, so that's teaching them entrepreneurship. Uh, my whole, the whole movement of Southside Community Garden was founded based on me fighting for justice for Tatiana Jefferson who was murdered by Fort Worth PD over three years ago and the trial still hasn't started. 
So when I organized that mural on Evans and Allen, I learned that that area was a food desert and I just wanted to pour back into that community. The appropriate term is actually food apartheid because this was systemically done. It wasn't a desert, it didn't happen naturally. Thank you guys for your time. I'm right over here in the corner. With enough funding, I would love to expand my program across Fort Worth. Good evening, everyone. My name is Consuela, and I am the franchise owner of a dispensary right here on the south side of um, south side of Fort Worth, Fort Worth, Evans and East Oleander. It's called 3.5 Cannabis Dispensary. Um, shout out to Southside. Shout out to Braver. <laughs> so um, I've been there since August of this year. Um, our main focus as an organization of a cannabis uh, industry is to educate, um, to destigmatize what this flower has been stigmatized as in our society for so long. Uh, we want to um, educate everyone on the benefits on the both sides of this flower, whether it's CBD or THC. Uh, we want to educate. I can't stress that enough. That's what we really want to do with this, um, with our dispensary. So. My table is located back there. Again, I'm on the corner of Evans and East Oleander. We are building. Um, I'm the third franchise. I'm the second one that's fully operational. The third one is still in, uh, in the works. The home office, basically, is in the Southeast Texas area, which is Sour Lake, I'm sorry, which is uh, Silsby. And the other one is gonna be opening up in the Beaumont area. So I'm the first one in the DFW area, and we are a black-owned business. Um, and so we're really trying to just push the effort of what this beautiful flower is known for, for its natural, organic content. And um, we want to decriminalize it. And we're gonna push for that effort. Um, <clears throat> I'm a firm believer that if alcohol is legal, why can't cannabis be legal? And so that's where we're trying to push it to decriminalize this and get this flower into the community to uh, for the benefit of what it's good for. So if you have any questions, uh, again, my table is back there. I do have brochures that has a lot of information on determining which one is best for you, whether it's THC or CBD. Both of them have great benefits for the medicinal side. Um, but please come and speak with me. Again, my name is Consuela, and I look forward to speaking to you all. Thank you. We're almost to uh, the councilman, but I did want to uh, give a shout out to ACH um, for hosting us tonight in this beautiful space. Uh, so can we all just give ACH a round of applause? Thank you. All right, and with that, um, I've given him many introductions in my life, um, but a man that needs no introduction because everybody knows who he is, um, Councilman Chris Nettles. Good evening, everyone. It is truly, uh-oh, a honor and a pleasure to be with you on this evening. Uh, one of the things we did um, in campaigning also in telling people what we want to do different for our community is to get the community involved, is to hear concerns. A lot of people don't like town halls because they get tough, but that's what we want. We want to know the true concerns, what you're dealing with in your communities, and how we can fix those. So that is what this event is about. We have all, city, all kinds of city staff that's here to answer your concerns to answer your questions. And so I want you to ask those questions, but I also want you to talk to us about them so that when you ask them, we can follow up. That's what our office is really here to do. And so um, I do want to acknowledge we have the chief of police that is, that is here, Chief Noakes. And then we also have our commander for our central division that is also here. And then I see we have ACM, Fernando is in the house. So we really have, we really have brought in all the dogs, oh well not dogs, all the chiefs. Let me be careful how I say that, all the chiefs. Is that okay, chief? All right, scratch that off the tape. All the chiefs in the house so that we can get things done. And so I really wanna thank our organizations, especially uh, VIP Fort Worth and Bravo Together and uh, this organization in Southside Garden and the dispensary is because we want to let you know that we are doing things in District 8 on the east side, on the south side for the betterment of our community. And so I'm going to start this slideshow so that we can have opportunities to ask questions. I will. Also, we see uh, Representative uh, Commissioner Brooks' office is here at Leon Pope. And so let's give him a hand. Thank you for coming tonight. <laughs> Commissioner Brooks, 
oversees a part, a majority of our district as well in the county level. And so I'll give a brief presentation about what we have been doing in District 8 for the last 15 months and what we aspire to do moving forward. And then I will take some questions. Um, I will be able to answer some of those questions. If, some, if it's for city staff, we'll have them come up and answer those questions. So here, and I'll just kind of give a brief, uh, of course, my name is Chris Nettles. I am your Fort Worth City Council representative. I was elected June tw uh, 2021. I currently sit on the Texas Wesleyan board. Their football team is phenomenal this year. Y'all need to start going to the games. They're doing real good. Um, Trinity Metro board and working with uh, our transit. Uh, I sit on, I'm part of the Fort Worth Rotary, National Black Caucus of Black Officials, uh, Texas. I really can't see y'all. <laughs> Um, so you see that there. So those are things that I'm doing for you as um, the elected official here in Fort Worth. So when we talk about economic development, what have we done since we got in office? So in, we have brought over 1,907 rooftops to support our case for a major grocery store and change. When I was running, we talked about how we needed a grocery store, how we needed uh, uh, drug stores, how we needed fresh produce, how we talked about 76104 being the lowest life expectancy in the nation and how do we combat that we have to bring rooftops we have to bring in money so that we can support that walmart is not coming Albertson is not coming if there's not dollars in our community that is just a true reality and so what we have to do is we want to make sure that we bring in affordable housing but also incomes that can support those grocery stores I was so excited when uh, Kathleen Hicks and Mike Monk, Mayor Mike Moncrief worked so hard to get the Walmarts and this plaza here built. But if you go to Walmart today, it stays packed. Grocery store, groceries don't stay on the shelves. It's because we have outgrown it. And so we have to support those. And so we've been combating that with bringing affordable um, and housing here. So Palladium USA uh, is bringing 240 mixed income workforce housing to East Berry Street. Lenora Holmes is bringing 350 rooftops to Shelby Road in Everman. James Walker, Hope Global, Dallas Marone, uh, Dawson, and Dunaway, and George all have partnered with our offices to bring these developments to come to City of Fort Worth. In order for those developments to come, we have to do some zoning change. We have to talk with our communities, with our neighborhoods, with Everman, with our school districts to make sure that happens. And so that's what we have been working on thus far in economic development. We broke ground on $56 million housing project. $56 million. When you're talking about trying to bring economics here, you gotta bring dollars and you gotta bring tax base to support economic development. And so we broke ground on that. I, I tell you that was one of the first uh, zoning cases that we worked with our Mitchell Boulevard, new Mitchell Boulevard is here. We worked with Bishop Kenneth Spears and his church uh, to make sure it's something that they want or how do we get to a medium or how do we get to a happy place? And what I have talked to all of our developers and our community is that we can't say no to every development, but what we can do is say, how do we work together to make sure that the community is supported as well as the developer is supported? And so some people will tell you that I'm just pro-development, I'm moving and shaking and not caring about the neighborhood. But if you know neighborhoods, they know we have talked and we have worked together to make sure things happen. And so we're really excited about that development. We broke ground that on yesterday. Um, we also broke ground on a Morrison Cool $65 million into the district, packing housing warehouse to bring 75 new jobs, priority uh, uh, employment into District 8. So when they came, they want to talk about that. I said, listen, I need my people. They live in the area, because that's right there off of 35, adjacent to Everman Parkway, Hallmark, Highland Hills. I said, don't be bringing me people from the north side. I need people in District 8 to have these type of jobs. And I'm talking about jobs that's making $60,000 a year. And so when I went to the groundbreaking, now they were so excited, I challenged them again. I need my people in our district to get these jobs. And so we're not just bringing these jobs. We want to make sure that we, as a people, get those jobs. Uh, this is really exciting. So on, if you're familiar with uh, Eastbury and Riverside, the old Montgomery Warehouse building. Uh, when I first got in the office, 
there was a zoning case to change it to a, um, it was a storage facility. Thank you. And I said, no, we don't want a storage facility. We need true economic development that's going to support our community. We want to uplift this area. Back in the day uh, where the bus transit is, it used to be a shopping center right there behind there. I used to get my hair cut there. It's not there anymore. It's just dirt. It's grass. It's no type of excitement. We got rundown motels. We got all, uh, gas stations that has all kind of things going on. We have to fix that. We can't police our way out, so we got to help the police officers and making sure we bring good economic development to that area. And so we're excited. We're going to bring, we partner with Center for Transforming Lives. They're going to bring a multi-million dollar development there where they're going to have space for you to come. If you have a restaurant and you're trying to get off the feet, off your ground, they're going to let you rent their commercial kitchen to do your uh, food the right way. They're going to, um, oh, turn the lights off. Okay, I think we need some lights for the camera back here. I'm sorry. Um, they're going to have a childcare facility. They're going to have working space, open space, where you can um, come and use their facility. And they're going to have green space, where a parking space where you come out and enjoy the greenery. And so we're excited about that. There's coming. We uh, was able to give them some money uh, through the city of Forward to make sure that project happens. This is the economic development that uh, has secured a 24-month pro uh, property holding for Hope Global, $70 million investment that's going to come to Evans and Rosedale. Uh, this project was kind of on the breaks or kind of just silent or killed. Uh, Historical Southside have been working really hard to make sure that they are, play a part into this uh, development. And so in this development, there is going to be a space set aside for a grocery store. And so Hope Global have already been working with some type of groceries to come in here. They're working with the Black Chamber. Uh, they're working with the Fort Worth Chamber. They're working with uh, South, Southeast Inc to make sure that we get some type of pr fresh produce inside of the South Side. And so uh, we're excited about that. Uh, fighting for justice, we approved to a portion of I-35 to name after Atafiana Jefferson Freeway. But it, the city council approved that in 22, uh, but it has to go through Texas legislative session. And so we're gonna be working with Nicole Collier office to bring that forward. Also, we in works of uh, renaming the um, community center at the Tatiana Carr Jefferson Community Center. We're working on that as things progress in uh, the legal manners. Um, also, we have been working to bring an oversight board to the city of Fort Worth, and we've been working with the Office of Police Monitor to establish that. Also, we have been working with Permanent Supportive Housing, PSH, and I tell you, this is one of um, the strongest topics uh, for our office, we house the majority of the homeless population in the city of Fort Worth. Up and down Lancaster, they're migrating to the south side, historical south side, and Polly, Texas Westland, and we have to figure out how we can fix our homeless population and our, a solution. The reality is COVID have taught us a lot, that all of us is a job away, a paycheck away, or a sickness away from being homeless. And so Tara Perez, who's in the back, have been really working uh, with our Tarrant County Coalition of Homeless. And so we're excited that we're going to be bringing, and I think that may be the next slide, uh, but I, I jumped ahead. We have approved the PSA uh, facility that will be housing 72 chronic homeless people. Chronic homeless is people who have been homeless over a year and have a disability. So it's not, it's not your panhandle, it's not the people who's up and walking down the street, it's not the people who don't want help, because a lot of times we say, people that are homeless, they don't want the help. There are people who are chronically homeless who really need the help and are being displaced. And so we have a facility that's gonna be built off of Crowley Road and Sycamore, I believe, Crowley and Sycamore. Uh, and then we also approve eight units of deeply affordable housing to assist families struggling with homelessness. This is the project that, we, that we're proposing to be built. We met with the Hallmark Camelot area. 
uh, we're excited about that. That's going to be coming up through the zoning process pretty soon. Um, we worked to advocate for uh, Jackie Craig that led to a settlement in the city of Fort Worth. We know that took over five to six years to get done. We finally did that in the city of Fort Worth. Um, we also uh, suggested alternate solutions instead of voting for the rights to speak. And so, and I'll tell you about this. I believe that the city of Fort Worth, us as a community, should always have our right to speak. And these are things that I believe and I think our community believes. And so we're working on that. We, you still have a right. You come down on the first and the third of, of the month. You get to talk about anything that you want to talk about for three minutes. I encourage you to come down because what happens is when you come down to city hall, you get the whole council and you get the staff and they're listening and they will, we will direct you to the right people to talk about, to talk to. So I encourage you to come down to city hall and speak to the entire council. Uh, I tell you, the numbers always matter the most. Fighting for justice. And so we initiated an anti-gun violence campaign that was called Fort Worth Violence Intervention when we brought the community organizations together, we brought VIP out at Dunbar, our police department came out, we have funeral home directors come out, and basically what we want to do is talk to our young people that, listen, guns necessarily don't kill people, but people with guns kill people. And we need you to understand that we can't talk about police officers killing us if black folks gonna kill black folks and white folks gonna kill white folks and expect. We got to deal with the whole everything and we got to figure out how we can fix the issue uh you know things that have happened that it was nothing that the police department could even do at that moment and so we have to go into the community not just my office not just the county not just the uh the organizations but we as a whole have to be a part of the process there's volunteer efforts there's i mean some of us you know, ain't always been as good in our life, and we got some experience that we can tell. I'm sure he got some volunteer efforts that you can come and talk to his group, but we need people to what? Play a part of the process, and that's what I want to help facilitate, and so we're going to be launching that. We went to, I believe we did Dunbar and Polly, and we're going to be going to middle schools and other high schools all around the city of Fort Worth. This is not just going to be a District 8 thing. This is going to be a city of Fort Worth thing. Uh, representation, um, we worked with our budget department to um, add more staff. Currently, I am representing 109,000 people in District 8, and so it's just been me and Sally Masson, who is our chief of staff, but we was able to hire an additional person in our office, which is uh, Jasmine Tate. Uh, he's our, one of our district directors, and so we're able to do more constituency work, and so don't hesitate to call. Um, I was in the office today, I answered about five or seven calls, and when I answered them, they was like, hello? Is this the council? I said, yes, is everything okay? Tell me your concerns. And they was just shocked, and so I have instructed our office that when, we, when you call, if we're available, we're going to answer your calls. We're going to email. We're going to email you back. We're going to get you set up with what you need to do. So do not hesitate to call our office. We, we are here to support your every need. Um, we also moved $3 million dollars. Uh, of our bond money from Sycamore Park to allow Pollard neighborhood, for one, to be included into the process, but also we're developing a lot off of uh, Oak Grove and Everman Parkway, and we have a lot of homes that are coming in, and we have park space with no park. And so we're going to use that $3 million to invest into establishing a park so that our young people can have something to do. The three million dollars was going to uh, Sigmar Park that has been closed for some time now to do some renovations, and it's nothing wrong with that. But we want to invest some money where people can use that park right now, and so we moved that money. Um, it was a it was a fuss, but we got it done, and so we did that for the community. We're excited about that. That's coming down the pipe. Also, uh, we went through redistricting process, and so a lot of people are aware that we have new maps here. During this redistricting process, the communities talked about how they wanted another Latino Hispanic opportunity district. We as a city council, the mayor, Maddie Parker, and all of us came to a consensus to establish a second Latino Has uh, Hispanic district. And so we look forward to that being elected in the next coming uh, months. And so we're excited about the new map. So if on the left side is our current district, 
on the right is our new district. Some of the changes is we lose uh, portions of Riverside, Meadowbrook, uh, we lose portions of Poly. We come farther down into the Burleson area and we pick up some more things off of 35 into the Garden Acres area. Um, also in Holland Hills, uh, they were really concerned with, if those of you are familiar with it, 20 and um, Oak Grove, that development that's on the uh, corner had a lot of poverty and drugs and uh, uses that Holland Hill didn't like. And so we, re we did a council initiative, rezone, and we rezoned that, that it won't be no clubs, so Neo's, Neon Club ain't coming back for those that was going to, it's not coming back. We rezoned it. <laughs> so only thing it can be there is a church, a daycare, or some type of center that will support the community. And so we're, we did that to support uh, those senior citizens. Uh, Holland Hills is really a, a marker and a statement in our, di in our district. Uh, we have been working with Trinity Metro to reconfigure a bus route to add to a stop to the VA hospital. And so we, uh, there was a stop that used to went to the VA hospital, but you could get to Dallas VA hospital faster than you can get to Fort Worth. And so we had to fix that and we fixed that and made that stop happen. If you guys are having concerns with bus stops or anything like that, again, I sit on that board. Um, one of the things that, uh, and I really appreciate to uh, our mayor, Maddie Parker, is that she said, we want to have a more tangible touch for our transit. We are the 12th largest city, and so we want to make sure that transit matters. And so we uh, selected two council members to sit on the transit board so that it can be information that's uh, relayed right away. And so myself and Michael Crane sits on that board. Uh, representation, so I talked about um, investing in our schools and we want to make sure that we partner with uh, our school districts. And so we're excited to announce that a lot of our schools that were D rated and C rated went up to B's and C's. Uh, and so that's exciting. Um, we're working on establishing a closer relationship with the superintendent and the uh, board trustees where we can meet twice a year uh, to talk about how we support our schools. I don't care what education you get, if it's charter schools, if it's private schools, but if it's Fort Worth ISD schools, we want to make sure that we support every child because if we want a stronger city, we have to have a smarter city. And so we're supporting our education. On the budget, uh, we was able to work with our police department as 73, 73 new field officers, including six NPO officers. Uh, we also, with our fire department, added 23 new staffs, uh, new positions for our HOPE team, as well as development service department added 38 positions. And so we're really trying to be a city where you can be touchable and reachable and we can get to your issues and concerns a lot faster. Uh, if you look at the current things that we have on the top, versus what we're going to have moving forward. Uh, our street sweepers, so some people have been talking about trash and, and dirtiness on our roads. We're going to go from 2 to 12. Uh, our camp cleanups, we're going to go from 35 to 110 uh, pounds collected. I mean, if you look on there, we're going to really be working for making the city of Fort Worth a more cleaner, vibrant city for you to live and thrive in. And so we're really excited about this budget that we have approved here at City Council. This is our contact information. So if you need to contact our office, again, you can email me directly. You can email uh, Sally Masson, who's been with us from the very beginning, as well as Jas Tate, Jasmine Tate, who's come online. And again, feel free to call our office. Let's talk about it. Let's come to a solution. And so that's really what I have. Um, we, as District 8, again, want to move forward. We want economic development. We want to grow. We want to make sure that our poverty cease and that the 76104 become a vibrant community again. My grandparents still in, in that area. And I tell you, it doesn't affect 70 and 80 year old people. It affects 20 year olds, 30 and 50 that are not going to live past 62 years old because of the poverty. And so we got to do our part. And so I know a lot of you didn't come to hear my stump speech, but this is what we have been doing for you at City Hall. 
uh, people say, what are you doing? This is it, so you can let people know. But I want to take your hard questions tonight. Um, I want to also uh, challenge our staff if those questions come up to assist me. And so we're going to open up the floor. We have, we'll take about 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes to take some calls, some answers, some questions. Sally's looking no. Seven to 10? Okay. <laughs> A seven to 10? Um, again, uh, this has been recorded. It'll be on the YouTube. Uh, the City of Fort Worth YouTube page tomorrow, as well as it's being live recorded. So, who has a question for me or the City of Fort Worth? <laughs> me? Sure. I'm sorry, I can tell. Okay. So, I've been doing some work with Como Community Center, uh, looking to do some organizing, and I'm really impressed with the programs that they're offering to the community. They have JPS coming out to do health seminars. They have financial literacy classes. They have grant writing workshops, all types of stuff. I'm really wanting to see how we can work together to bring more of those resources to Southside Community Center. I understand both centers are under neighborhood services, so I want to see what we can, how we can work together to bring JPS across the bridge to address the low, you know, life expectancy, and maybe get that community some education, so where we may be able to increase uh, the life expectancy in that community. I certainly do, and so, and I will tell you about uh, Como. Como is a city by itself, and if you talk about Como, you talk about NAC, and you talk about uh, those Como leaders, what they have done is really just taken over, and they have, a lot of those things that they facilitate is community driven. And so I would say to our community, as you, you listed off a lot of things, we can do that here in this community, but it's gonna take the support of organizations like that we have listed here, I know Sean Lasser has really been talking about some things, working to make that possible. It takes a really strong neighborhood to really change the outcome. And so I will support you in that. And we can set up a meeting for any organization that wants to participate. Our, our office is taking notes. So any other organization that want to participate in that meeting will we'll, uh, facilitate that. Yes, Dan. Uh, there was a city council uh, work session briefing about sidewalks in Fort Worth. Mm -hmm. uh, 2,600 miles, about 600 miles that are in bad shape. What about the places where there aren't sidewalks and should be? For example, in my neck of the woods along Meadowbrook Drive, there's missing sections all over the place. There just never has been a sidewalk. So what do we need to do to get that going? Is that going to have to go wait on a bond election, or is there room to try to do that through budget? I find Ms. Lauren is coming. <laughs> All right, so yes, sidewalks are a, a big concern of ours. What you're referring to is basically a gap filling for sidewalks. So get with me, we'll look at the location. We do have many priorities throughout the city, um, but we'll look and see where yours ranks in terms of priority and, and where we might be able to find funding for that. Okay. But good question, thank you. No, you could. And I think some of the priorities is like near schools, and others? Yeah. And, and so there's, there's a lot of different funding opportunities for sidewalks. So near schools, we're looking at safe routes to school programs. Um, so there's a lot of different funding opportunities. Council has appropriated a lot of funds to sidewalks because they are just as concerned as we are. Um, so please get with me on your locations and we can look and see what's, what our opportunities are. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Very excited about what you're doing here. My name is Victoria Stevenson, and I am a minority woman in small business. And we specialize in building materials, structural steel, rebar, and miscellaneous metals. And what I'm interested in doing is bringing our headquarters here to put a fulfillment center that will bring vocational trade so that our at-risk youth, our Section 3, our LMI can touch it, feel it, and be able to do structural steel, fabrication, roofing, any of those vocational trades. And if they're in high school, they have an opportunity to come and have state-of-the-art equipment, do innovation, you know, technology, even if it's professional services. And I'm looking for about 10 acres, and I want to know how you can support me by bringing it to that district so that we can teach and have those young adults, LMI individuals, get them off the streets, and teaching the trade, and then they'll still be making money. So I, I'll tell you two things. Uh, one, I will 
refer you to uh, connect with our Black Chamber of Commerce. So she's here. And we have. We, okay, we're already working. Yes. Okay, and I support the Black Chamber also with Southeast um, with development and bringing, because they really help us find uh, land that's available, um, working with different developers. And so I don't have a problem with supporting that. I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll get your information tonight and we'll set up a meeting. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Patricia Robert Harris. You're well known to me and I think I'm well known to you because I contact you guys all the time. I'm on the corridor of Beach and Lancaster, not too far from uh, Poly High School, and I've chosen to stay to, in the neighborhood to help the people on the east side. Well, because of the vacancy, because of the street walkers, they are, have tend to run away a lot of our people. Uh, some of my elderly people, which is who I service for the most part, have been afraid to come back to the office. And so I have been calling multiple times to the city, trying to get some assistance because we've had broken windows, we've had broken doors, uh, we've had people to try to break in. And so that's very discouraging, not only for my um, not only for my patients, but for me and for my staff, when we come in the morning, we have someone laying at the front door, and we have patients following us in, and we have to call either security or the police to get inside our building. Also, we have plumbing problems. The water comes out dark, and they have to use the bathroom. The city, a month or two ago, had a project to repair the plumbing. Now it's dark. We can't even drink the water there. So I was wondering, how can I get some help, maybe, for uh, going forward for all of the problems that we've had, all the extra expenses that we've had, all the extra conversations that I've had with multiple people of the city? Well, you're in the right place. Uh, you, you're sitting next to our commander for that area uh, and the chief. And so we, we can deal with that, uh, that crime issue tonight, and then if we have uh, water uh, that can assist us. We will get those, those questions answered for you. And also, litter is a extreme problem. And one thing I will, okay, one thing I will say, um, again, we have the HOPE team. And I don't know, uh, Tara, do you mind giving us a brief or the chief of what the HOPE team is to do? I don't know. The HOPE team. Good evening, everybody. I'm Neil Noakes, uh, Chief here at Ford PD. First of all, thank you, Councilmember Nettles, for the invitation to be a part of this, this great event tonight. And I have to say this is one of the best attended community forums I've seen in a long time. So it tells me we have a lot of residents who, are, who care about the community, want to see things improve, and you're talking to the people who can make that happen. Uh, specifically talking about the homelessness issue. We have a team called our HOPE team, the Homeless Outreach Program Enforcement Team, which we have, I think, tripled the size of since we started. Their main focus is outreach to our homeless community in Fort Worth, first, to offer resources, to offer support, and do everything they can to set that community up for success, to get them off the streets, to get them what they need. But as we have heard, there are times when those efforts don't work and that's when law enforcement action is taken to make sure we are respecting the rights not only of the homeless community, but of business owners and of residents who are seeing problems in their neighborhoods because we have people sleeping in doorways, maybe urinating out in public, dumping trash in places. So what we're going to do, we're going to connect with, with this young lady right here and talk about engaging our HOPE team and our crisis intervention team because I think we all know that unfortunately Oftentimes when we're dealing with the homeless, sometimes they're dealing with those who are dealing with mental wellness issues as well. So our first move will be to try to help those individuals. And we can work with Tara as well because I know there's a lot of resources that are offered for our unhoused residents. That will be our first move. But if that doesn't work, we will take the efforts that are legally permitted to make sure we're providing some service to you, ma'am. We'll, we'll make sure we take care of that. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Yes, sir. Uh, but please, we'll move on to 
somebody else, she brought up another issue, uh, and that is the water. When the water comes out of the pipe and it's so dirty, uh, she needs somebody, a direct person to contact, so she doesn't have to deal with that. I mean, that's a shame. I had to do I had the same problem. I'm right over down Terrell Avenue, and I had to read from my house and, 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 and put the water filter in. So I got the same problem. But she, her, her problem is real significant. When you ride down Lancaster, there's no way you can not see those five guys standing over the bridge, burning money, two white girls and, 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 and three, and one's on one side of the bridge and two on the other side. There's no way nobody could not see that. I see it. And when, they all, and when I drive back through, I say, man, y'all got to move away from them. Yeah. But you know, in some ways, she needs to help. It's, uh, and not only with the homeless, but also there's no way, no reason in the world she should have plumbing that they got in, in like they got in, 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 uh, in Alabama. We're going to help her, Johnny. We're going we gonna to help her. Okay. All right. So who's she going to contact? Like she going to contact me. She just told me. We're going we gonna to help her. Okay. All right. <laughs> 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 Let me ask her. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. I also wanted to ask if uh, the library is mm -hmm. We have one staff member that has been And I, and I will say on, on that, w when we are encountered with that, we need to immediately, is it, that's something we call the Hope Team, is that correct, Chief? Yeah, we call 911, we call 911, we call 911, we make sure we get Yeah, we get people out there at, on the scene right there. And so when we are seeing this, we, the way we correct that is by calling and getting the people out right away. Okay. All right, two more questions before we go into the open. Uh, yes, ma'am. I don't have, I don't have a, a question, but I just I thank you for saying something about that. Last week, I want to give some props to the community for pushing um, this uh, revitalization of Evans Plaza. Mm -hmm. And a couple of days ago, we were out there with, I think, about eight city people walking the plaza because that is a big deal. And I think the frustrating part is trying to comb through all of the woven systems to get to the issue. And um, I don't have a question, but I would just say, like, we walked it, we took notes, people were there, we have emails, people are working on it, but I just want to make sure that the community sees us actually get these things accomplished, that we don't just talk about it, we walk, we do all the things, and then it doesn't happen. So I'm really looking and looking forward to us to really accomplishing what we talked about on that walk in terms of cleaning up, getting the water fountain working again, the streets, the lights, all of that. Because what I don't want is for bigger entities like the Economic Development Project you talked about come into the community and then all of a sudden all the issues go away. When the community has been asking for these issues to go away for a long time. We need to bring like we need to come together in terms of economic development in the community as opposed to pitting them against each other. So I'm excited and I'm glad that you uh, sent your team out to walk with us and um, also bring her together. We would love to hear from the community of what you need so that we can continue to do our best to raise those issues and work with the city, work with Chris to make these things happen. Oh, count it up. So Thank you. I would also like to say that uh, Southside Community Garden would like to hear from the community as well to see ways that we can maybe help facilitate real change in the community. Um, I, we did an event at Morningside last month, Chris, and uh, while we were preparing, I spoke with uh, Monica Garrett, the principal. There's a city, I believe there's like a city-owned park on yeah, Morningside's we property. Yeah. So how long y'all been working? Like, I, I mean, I just, it was kind of 
So thank you for that. And we do have a meeting set up. So she's talking about the Morningside Middle School that has uh, a park inside the Jason Gate. And so I think we work with parks and understand that it is actually owned by the ISD, but leased to the parks. And so we're, right. so we're working on fixing that issue. And so again, and I tell you, and, I, and I, these are a lot of issues that we have been dealing with for many, many of years. And so um, I'm, ex I'm glad you brought that up and we have staff here that, un that heard you. And so we'll get that. Last, I'm gonna take these two questions and then we're gonna open it up so that you can go to the tables of our city staff that's here. Yes. Hello, um, my name is Andrea Love and I'm the owner of Express Tax and Financial Services. Um, my company's model is offering financial literacy within the community. Um, we've discussed a lot of things that are going on in the community, but we're not discussing how this specific district is a low to moderate income district. What are you all specifically doing in the school district and when it comes to economic development to teach and promote financial literacy and financial I'm not seeing any program that are specifically for this um, a financial literacy center, a financial uh, uh, center for small business development. I'm not seeing any of that here in Fort Worth, and it is in Dallas. So I'm curious as to how to get that done, especially with the Fort Worth ISD, any financial literacy programs in the school. And it doesn't just start with the, uh, it starts with the parents, it starts at home. And so that sounds like council initiate initiatives that you would bring to the city to bring those programs. Uh, the big component is that is our school district. And so for so long we have been working in silos or in the individual. And that's just the way life has allowed us to work. And so this council have been one of the strongest council about talking about working with the school district. And I think I kind of facilitated that earlier. We're going to have um, our superintendent for Fort Worth ISD to come and give us an update of what they're doing in the school district and how we can meet two elected bodies, come together and meet and address some of these concerns. And so um, that's an initiative that needs to take place that somebody can lead, as well as community being a part. So if there's a program that's working in Dallas and we can uh, mock, we don't mock a lot of things that Dallas do. <laughs> but, but if it's working for our kids, we will try to see how we can make that happen. Well, I am the chair for economic development with the NAACP, mm -hmm. and I'm very familiar okay. with uh, programs and funding sources as well that we can bring to the city of Fort Worth because I'm from Fort Worth. Well, I will entertain a meeting. We have, uh, I believe, uh, Lawrence uh, Fernando, Lawrence Thompson, Lawrence Thompson uh, works in our. Uh, He's a uh, manager of uh, education strategies uh, in the city manager's office, and we can put you in touch with the department. Thank you. We'll do that. Okay. I think I have one hand here. That's okay. You, you sure? Yeah. Okay. okay.
who want to have lost, not lost loved ones, but to me, to beautify the city, we have to not do that. You know what I'm saying? Um, we have grave sites for that. Not to, to dress your street up with uh, memorial, memorial markers. To me, that doesn't look nice. You know what I'm saying? So there's something in cleaning up the neighborhood um, that needs to take place. Um, I'm not trying to come off on roof or whatever, but those are things that stand out to me that would help bring the community back to where it needs to be. You don't know what, well, where it needs to be. Very nice and clean. And I know it's going to take a community as a whole. We have a lot of new people from the countries and everything moving over here in the area. I can get that. I understand that. However, we still need to we appreciate the new development. We really do. We welcome it. But however, once we get here, let's take care of it. You know, what are we doing to make it, to beautify it, to make it look nice so we can have other things come. So that's what I no, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I tell you, um, and that's why this budget is so great for this, this time, because we had to really deal with trying to clean the city of Fort Worth. And so when you look at uh, miles clean going from 410 miles to 1380, that is a major difference. That is investing back in the community. And the other thing is, uh, we do uh, we do bus cleanups, we do uh, community cleanups, and a lot of times we do those. You have a neighborhood a neighborhood association to come out. You only have five people to come, mm -hmm. and so we have to build an alliance with the community. And so I appreciate all your concerns. Uh, we have wrote them down. We we willing to meet with anybody anywhere. And so I want to say thank you, guys, for coming out tonight. Thank you for being a part of the community. Uh, all our our organizations are here to speak with you before you leave. So please get their cards, get their information, and be informed before you leave. You have one thing to say. Rodney. Did you have something to say? No. no. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Our city taxes is my company now. The uh, future of Fort Worth is written in the past and in mobility. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Um, again, thank you for being here. Please, I'm still here. Uh, Jasmine is still here. It's good to see uh, Pastor Crane in the back. Um, and so um, thank you guys for coming out. And you are dismissed to uh, be with the vendors. Have a good evening.